Hello everyone, I'm the Solar Gamer, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. I've been having trouble uploading videos lately because of, um, you know, end of school, graduation, stuff like that. So, once this is all done, I'll be able to do this more often. But, what I want to do now is, I want to actually see how much, uh, how long of a distance I can get with these fuel tanks, just like this, with this little setup. Because this is a good little aircraft right here. But, it needs to be efficient to uh, circumnavigate the uh, the globe. Thumner, Corlan, Bilbart, you are clear for takeoff. I turned down the volume too, so it's not as loud. You know, one thing I find that's tricky about recording any game is getting the sound to be uh, correct so that the game volume doesn't drown out your voice and you don't drown out the game volume. So it's, it's difficult at times. Alright, we're actually going to climb to about 10,000 feet. That's that's what I'm going to say. Right there. And we'll turn on precision controls because I forgot to. Precision controls uh, make it a little bit easier. You can turn it on with caps lock. And as you can tell uh, down over here, they turn blue. This is the normal ones that they turn blue if you have precision controlling on. Okay, and we're just gonna climb. I'm actually gonna do a little bit of trim to make sure we stay in an upward position. As you can see, my plane's slightly turning downward, uh, going, you know, down. And like I said, what you can do is you can turn on trim, you hold down alt, and then I would hold down, well not hold down, I'd press S a couple times. And that can keep the nose in the air a bit. Alright. And if you want to clear all that, whatever you do, just hit X. And I'm going to hit X now, only because we are at 10,000 feet. And I want to level off here. Alright, so we're going to see how far this jet goes on two tanks. I mean, we're already almost down to a half a tank left. <sighs> but I need to figure out how we're going to get across the globe. So, that's just part of the uh, the challenge that awaits us when we get back to the hangar. All right, and we are almost out of fuel. We made it to the other continent or other stretch of land. I don't even know if there are any continents, it looks kind of like a Pangea world, but, uh... Yeah, so we have made it over here. And, I mean, it, it is a nice stretch of ocean in between, but, I mean, there's so much more land to cover. And this ocean right here is going to be the big challenge. Because if we can't get across this ocean, then we won't survive. Alright, so we just lost our engine. So, we'll keep gliding. Alright, um, we are making it a pretty good distance into the, the mainland. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go in for the landing right now. Alright. And of course we topple over. <laughs> All right, so we have landed. Yeah, that's the problem with the uh, the setup of landing gear that I have is that um, since it's three, it'll just decide to topple over. Oh, we're moving. Well, I don't think we're gonna get anywhere. But um, yeah. Okay, so this is the distance that we traveled from the KSP, which the KSP should have an icon, actually. I don't know why it doesn't. Okay, so this is f two fuel tanks. That's really not that far at all, if you think about it like this. 
the arc. Oh god, that's mathematically that would be like yeah, way more than an aircraft can carry. That's that's way too many fuel tanks. Whoa! Oh, oh we're on a hill. No, we're not. What the heck is it doing? Stop, 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 stop. Stop moving. What are you doing? Alright, we're just gonna leave them there. Um, yeah, they're good. That'll be our little marker. Alright. Let's go back to the space plane hangar here. And let's think logically. If I added a couple more this way. Oh. I don't think it'll be as um, effective. Alright, let's move these off for a minute. looks kind of funny right now. Uh, what do I need? Something like that. And... Another one of these. Okay. Guess we're doing this one. Symmetrical. This is something else. <laughs> I don't even think this is going to fly. Well, I mean, it's going to fly. It's just... Move these ones into the back. Move that closer up there. Not the stylus thing that's going to be flying in the air, but, I mean, if it works, that's all we care about. Well, let's just name this the Kerbin Explorer 2, and we'll just see how we do. Okay, so the nose is face down, which is a big problem, because that's gonna, not going to help us get off the ground at all. But we'll just take a peek here. I'm going to start up the other engines, too. Just so we can go fast enough. It is rising. And right, let's go. Air. Get in the air. Well, it actually did. And it's actually very, very stable, too. Wow. I was not expecting that. Um, okay, I'm just going to do a quick test run. I will probably cut to when I am about to land. Alright, so I just wanted to explain one thing first. Uh, my thinking behind adding this extra two, these extra two engines right here was that the atmospheric, the, I forget what it's called, the lower atmospheric engine will turn on after this one's all burned up, meaning we'd be lower in the atmosphere. Like right now we're at 10,000. I plan on getting higher <laughs> up into the atmosphere where this is going to take us. But when we come back down and this shuts off, we can glide some more using the regular atmospheric engine. Like I said, I forget the name of it, but that was my plan on adding these two. So, I just wanted to explain that. I, I just noticed something. Um, my two engines on the side, they're not using this. The, um, the fuel canisters that they have. Because they're full. They're actually using... Or they used, before I turned them off. This one right here. Which is interesting. 
Yeah, there's a little bit of a problem with the engines and power, uh, like from fuel and everything like that. And they don't. They there needs to be a way where you can directly tell the engine to only take, you know, whatever fuel you need, or whatever fuel canister you have set for it. Because I don't know how it took power from this, because it's it's not connected. Well, uh, maybe it is. I don't know. I'll figure it out after. In the, um, the hangar. But I just I don't think that should happen. If you look down, you'll see three brave Kerbal pilots that successfully landed on the new continent after they crossed the Kerblantic Ocean. And then they were abandoned. <laughs> and now they can't get home. What a sad story. All right, let's continue on our flight. All right, now I have a dilemma. I could put the um, the Kerbin Explorer down before it hits the oh, before it hits the ocean, or I could try to make it to this little stretch of land. I mean, this fuel's about to run out, and then I'm going to use the backups right here. So, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know what? I'm going to go for it. Because what's the fun in um, not trying to do that? Actually, we're falling very fast. I don't... Hang on. There we go. I don't think I'm going to make it over there. Alright, I'm going to divert myself. Oh, that's not diverting. Alright, I recovered from that little fall. And uh, we're going to go down right here. Alright, here we go. Landing the big Kerbin Explorer 2. Oh, okay. I don't have the parachute on this one, but I don't even think I really need it. As long as I land on a very good lord. Okay, we lost the... <laughs> what the heck? We lost the engine and we landed pretty abruptly. Alright. That would be a success. Except, we keep rolling. Good lord. Anyways, we are... About, I would have given us, if we would have made it probably right there, and then we would have gone down. Or maybe I could have saved us and landed on this little strip of land, but I really, I don't think I, that we had enough fuel to get over there. So, I, this is going to be a challenge. This is really going to be a challenge, figuring out how I could do this. But for now, we're rolling. We're rolling. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, God. This did not help. You know what? Just do it. Go, 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 go. 
Oh my god, no! Oh no, I shouldn't have done that! Uh... Right. Very good. That was a malfunction, is what that was. I don't remember, you know, clicking anything. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, boy. Sometimes I should just leave things alone. Anyways. So, yeah. I think I need to really give this a little bit more thought. And, um, yeah, I will come back and we will figure this out. Alright? So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And stay tuned for more.